Dear children, friction is all around us. Like gravity, friction is a force. More often than not, when people hear the word friction, they think about things rubbing together. And that's exactly what friction is, the big rub. Let's learn something more about friction. In this lesson, you will learn about the significance of friction, factors affecting friction, friction in our daily life and types of friction. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain how friction acts on objects, identify the factors affecting friction, describe the types of friction, identify the ways in which friction helps us in our everyday life. Mom, drive faster. Speed thrills but kills, my dear. But mom, the road is also good. Oh no! What happened? The car going in the front applied brakes suddenly. So I was also forced to apply brakes to avoid collision. But what was that sound? It was caused by the tires of our car. Tires? Yes, when I applied the brakes, the car was traveling speedily. So? When I applied the brakes suddenly, the tires had to stop suddenly and the friction between the tires and the road caused that shrieking sound. I always thought that friction is an evil. It's actually a necessary evil. What do you mean by that? Basically, friction is a force that opposes the relative motion between two objects in contact. Force of friction is the force which opposes the motion of an object over a surface. This friction produces heat between the surfaces of the two objects that are in contact and in relative motion. When a kid on a bicycle stops pedaling, the bike slows down due to the friction between the tires and the sidewalk. Friction isn't always bad though. If you have ever tried to start running on a wet floor, you know that too little friction can just make you slip and slide. You need a certain amount of friction to get a grip in order to get yourself going. Okay. Friction can also be explained using another simple example. The ball rolling on a horizontal surface comes to rest after some time because of the resistance of earth by the horizontal surface. This retarding or opposing force of earth to the body by the horizontal surface is called the force of friction. The force of friction can also be defined as the retarding force which is called into play when a body actually moves or tends to move over the surface of another body. Now I understood the meaning of friction clearly. That's good. Why does friction exist between two surfaces? Friction exists between two surfaces due to irregular or uneven surfaces, interlocking of micro-level surfaces between two surfaces, plugging of harder surfaces into the smoother surfaces. But it also causes wear and tear. I am sure it would have caused damage to our car tires. That's true. I just told you that it's a necessary evil. Now, while playing football with your friends, have you ever wondered why the ball stops rolling slowly after traveling some distance? Hmm, when two surfaces contact each other, there is some attachment between the two. The attachment results in friction, which opposes the motion of one surface with respect to the other. Friction opposes motion between two surfaces. Friction force tries to stop relative motion between two surfaces in contact. The force of friction always opposes the applied force. For example, when you push a box across the floor, it stops after moving some distance. Now push the box in the opposite direction. Friction force must be acting on the box opposing its motion. The force of friction acts between the surface of the box and the surface of the floor. Similarly, when you kick the ball, the frictional force 
acts in a direction opposite to that of the applied force. This frictional force stops the ball in motion gradually over a distance. Does the force of friction always oppose the applied force? Yes, always. If we apply force on an object from the right to the left, then the friction acts from the left to the right and vice versa. Mom, why is skating on a road difficult when compared to that of a skating ring? Very true. You will not be able to skate on the road because the surface of the road is uneven. Hence, there will be lot more friction against your skates than in the skating ring. Why does oil make a surface slippery and in spite of the force of friction acting on it, why are we not able to apply brakes? Well, you see, oil reduces friction on a surface. It is because of this reason you are not able to balance your cycle. What does this mean? I mean to say that friction is affected by the surface on which an object is moving. Friction depends on the smoothness of the surfaces in contact. The force of friction depends on the nature of the surfaces in contact. Let's see how the smoothness of a surface affects friction through an activity. We will need an examination pad, a pencil of cylindrical shape, a smooth glass sheet and a ground glass sheet. Now, supporting the pad with a wooden block making inclined plane, Mark a point on the pad and roll the pencil down from this point onto the smooth glass surface of the table. Note the distance that pencil travelled from the bottom of the inclined to the point where it came to rest on the smooth glass surface. Now replace the smooth glass sheet on the table with the sheet of ground glass. Again roll the pencil downwards from the same point marked on the pad. Note the distance the pencil travelled from the bottom of the inclined to the point where it came to rest from the ground glass surface. What do you observe? The pencil travelled a greater distance on the smooth glass surface. Does this mean that the smoothness of the surface affects friction? Exactly! The smoother the surface, lesser the frictional force. How? The amount of friction also depends on how rough or smooth the surfaces of the objects moved are. When the surface is smooth, then there are more contact points, but corresponding force per point is smaller. In this case, the weight of the block pressing against the surface beneath is disturbed across large numbers of contact points. The net result is that there are greater number of contact points but fewer welded joints opposing motion. Thus, a smooth surface offers smaller friction in comparison to rough surface. Ok? If you are writing on the normal paper with pen and then you are writing on a butter paper which is smoother than normal paper, what will be the difference you would have while writing? I don't know. You can feel that writing on butter paper is smoother than normal paper. But why is the surface so important in determining friction? Friction is a result of irregularities in the surface of the bodies in contact. Even the surfaces of the bodies that appear smooth to us have tiny irregularities. When one body is brought into contact with another, the irregularities on both the surfaces get interlocked. The interlocking of these irregularities of both the bodies gives rise to friction. When we attempt to move any surface, we have to apply a force to overcome interlocking. On rough surfaces, there are a larger number of irregularities. So the force of friction is greater if a rough surface is involved. Now I understand the reason behind the difficulty in skating on a road when compared to the skating ring. Actually, friction is a self-adjusting force. What? Yes, my dear. But how? Take for example, a table resting on a floor. Push it gently. What do you observe? Nothing happens. Exactly. The table doesn't move because the frictional force opposes the motion of the table. Okay. Now, increase the force applied. Does the table move? 
No, this shows that the frictional force also increases. That means frictional force is proportional to the applied force and maintains static equilibrium. Then how come things move when more force is applied? Friction always adjusts itself equal to the applied force up to a certain value called limiting friction. What is limiting friction? There is always some limit up to which the force of friction can increase with the increase of the magnitude of force. The maximum value of the force of static friction which is called into play when a body just begins to slide over the surface of another body is called limiting force. I see. Similarly, the force applied to move a heavier object is more than the force applied to move a lighter object. For example, you will need to apply more force to move the couch than that required to move the single chair. The weight of the object leads to an increase or decrease in the frictional force. But how? Heavier the object, harder are the irregularities of the surfaces in contact pressed together. Let me show you what I mean through a small activity. We need two wooden blocks, two pieces of string and a spring balance. What's a spring balance? What do we need that for? A spring balance is a device used for measuring the force acting on an object. It consists of a coiled spring which gets stretched when an object is hung to the hook of the balance. As the spring stretches, the pointer on the spring balance is pulled down on a graduated scale and the pointer reading indicates the degree of force applied on the object. Here are two wooden blocks. One weighs 1 kilogram and the other weighs 2 kilograms. Let's try one end of the string to the block weighing 1 kilogram and the other end to the hook of the spring balance. Okay, what next? Pull the handle of the spring balance to drag the block on the table and make a note of the reading when the block just begins to move. Next, we repeat the same process for the block weighing 2 kilograms. What do you observe from the readings? The reading for the block weighing 1 kilogram is 1 unit on the spring balance. However, the reading on the balance for the block weighing 2 kilograms is 2 units. The readings noted on the spring balance during the activity shows that the force required to move objects varies from their corresponding weights. Hence, the weights of an object does affect friction. What are the other factors affecting friction? First, answer one simple question of mine. Okay. Take two slides, one being a metal one and the other a cemented one with same inclinations. Now tell me, on which one it would be easier for you to slide? The metal one. Why do you think that it would be easier to slide on a metal slide than on a cement slide? The cement side will be comparatively rougher than the metal one. Very good! However smooth the cement slide is made, it will never become as smooth as metal. So rougher the surface, greater the friction. Exactly! Let's continue with our previous activity to understand this better. Here we use the wooden block weighing 2 kilograms. We know that the reading of the spring balance when the block was dragged on the glass table was 2 units. Now, let's remove the glass sheet on the table and carry out the same activity on the wooden surface of the table. The spring balance now reads 3 units. With the same object, the readings noted on the spring balance varied every time we changed the type of surface on which it was dragged. This proves that nature of the surface also affects friction. Hmm. The factors affecting friction are smoothness of the surface, weight of the object and nature of the object. Yes, I will remember.
Have you ever wondered why it's easy to move your bag with wheels? Imagine trying to drag it across the floor. I don't know, but you are right. It is easy to roll the bag across. It would definitely be tough to drag it. The reason behind this is rolling friction is less than sliding friction. What is rolling and sliding friction? It is a type of friction. You mean there are different types of friction? Exactly. The block of wood would have come down due to the action of gravity if there were no force of friction. This type of force of friction that exists between two surfaces in contact when there is no relative motion is called static friction. Frictional force that comes into action before the start of the motion of an object is called static friction. Okay. What are the other types of friction? Now if we slightly push the block it starts sliding on the plane. The friction that exists between two surfaces when one body slides over the other is called sliding friction. What is the other one? If the object rolls on surface, then the friction existing between the surfaces is called rolling friction. In other words, when one body rolls over the surface of another body, the resistance to its motion is called the rolling friction. For example, rolling of a ball across the floor, motion of the book on rollers, etc. Do you know that rolling friction is little less than sliding friction, which in turn seems to be less than static friction? How? You need lesser force to keep sliding the table than to move it from rest and you would need even lesser force to keep it moving if the table had wheels. When an object is sliding, the tiny irregular points on its surface don't get time to interlock with the ones on the surface that it is sliding on. That's why you encounter lesser friction while sliding. Since the rolling friction is smaller than the sliding friction, sliding is replaced in most machines by rolling by the use of ball bearings. Common examples are the use of ball bearings between hubs and the axles of ceiling fans and bicycles. What else? Let's take a small break as I have to prepare our dinner. Agreed. I'll come back in an hour and explain the rest of things regarding friction. Okay. Just try to recollect the things I explained to you. Mom, now what do you want? Catch me if you can. Manu, give that kadai. I need it now. Great, I won. You were not able to catch me. You slipped from my hold as my hands were oily. But how? It happened because oil acts as a lubricant. The oil on my hand produced the friction between your hand and my hand. So, I could not retain my grip on you. Do lubricants reduce friction? Yes, in fact, any substance that is introduced between two surfaces in contact to reduce friction is called a lubricant. Is this the reason why gymnasts supply some core substance on their hands? That's right. It increases friction and enables them to grip the beam better. In fact, friction is required to enable us to perform many tasks in our daily life. Remember the wet floor caution sign? Why do we need to walk carefully on a wet floor? The floor becomes slippery due to water and we may fall down. As I told you earlier, friction is a necessary evil. It is a necessary evil because it has both advantages and disadvantages. Imagine what would happen if there was no friction. For example, we wouldn't be able to walk as it is because of friction between the ground and feet that we are able to walk. Friction between our hands and other objects to help us grip them. We wouldn't be able to use erasers because it is the friction between the paper and the eraser that helps remove pencil marks and moving objects would never stop. The brakes of automobiles wouldn't work without friction. It plays a vital role in keeping the building materials together. Life would be really miserable without friction, isn't it? I was under the impression that friction was not good for us. But why do we consider friction as a necessary evil? It is considered as an evil because 
a lot of energy is wasted in overcoming the force of friction and hence the efficiency is also reduced. Due to friction, there is wear and tear of moving parts. For example, it wears out the materials whether they are screws, ball bearings or soles of shoes. You know the shoes that you discard were worn out due to the friction between them and the surfaces that you walked on. It makes doors and windows jam. That's why you hear the creaking sounds when you try to open a jammed door or window. Friction can also produce heat. When you feel very cold, the first thing we do is to rub our palms together for a few minutes as it produces heat. Similarly, when you strike a matchstick against the rough surface, it catches fire. How do you say that lot of energy is wasted because of friction? You might have observed that the jar of a mixer becomes hot when it is run for a few minutes. When a machine is operated, heat generated causes much wastage of energy. Despite the fact that the friction is very important in our daily life, it also has some disadvantages like the main disadvantage of friction is that it produces heat in various parts of machines. In this way, some useful energy is wasted as heat energy. Due to friction, we have to exert more power in machines. It opposes the motion. Due to friction, noise is also produced in machines. Engines of automobiles consume more fuel which is a money loss. What are the advantages of friction? Friction is vital in some cases. In your bicycle brakes, for example, to make your bicycle stop when you want. Applying brakes creates friction between brake pads and the wheels and makes the bicycle stop. You wouldn't be able to write with a pen or pencil if there was no friction between pen and paper. Therefore, you can say that friction is a necessary evil. Friction plays a vital role in our daily life. Without friction, we are handicapped. It will become difficult to walk on a slippery road due to low friction. When we move on ice, it becomes difficult to walk due to low friction of ice. We cannot fix nail in the wood or wall if there is no friction. It is friction that holds the nail. The horse cannot pull a cart unless friction furnishes him a secure foothold. I never knew that it's a necessary evil. Actually, I didn't try to look at its advantages at all. Now you know. And I'm sure whenever you see something, you try to correlate with what you have studied. This helps you to keep your memory fresh always. So we have now completed the first part of our discussion regarding friction. In this lesson, you have learned to explain how friction acts on objects, identify the factors affecting friction, describe the ways in which friction helps us in our everyday life, explain the types of friction.